Hello and welcome Scorpio. This is your October 2023 general reading with myself, Thomas Janak. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, buy me a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Much appreciated. What we do here, Scorpios, we will look at the overall energy for the months ahead before we then go and look into your emotional core, see if there's love coming in, if there's look at if there's healing that needs to happen, that sort of stuff, before we then lastly look at opportunities as they present themselves to you in the months of October 2023 for your very sign. For whatever reason, I have the feeling I have to shuffle again. What that means is... When things like this happen, where I feel I have to shuffle again, um, when I already shuffled, there is an energy around you, Scorpios, this month, where you will very likely feel a bit insecure and a bit, I'm not quite sure where, you, where to go here. Very likely this will come up in the reading somehow. Um, now, just on that note, we're in the month of October. October is the 10th month, so slash the zero. We have the number or the energy of one, which is the number of Aries, even though it's not uh, exactly Aries' energy. But the point is, the 10th month is a month of new beginnings. And that has to do with the fact that the, the month that we're looking at, October, is the month that follows September. And September is the ninth month. Nine is the number of completion. So this is the month where we're not looking back, but where you look forward and start a new, start afresh, start uh, kickstart things again that kind of energy and that's what is needed regardless of whether or not you are insecure about something okay um somehow that already feels like your overall energy um that may be the case i only work here whatever the guides say whatever comes in uh, i will say wow okay <laughs> yeah here we have it here we have your progression energy <laughs> right now this is interesting i asked the guides to give me uh, all the information in the cards here for the three sections that i sort of separate the videos in because i always find it easier when when i separate them into sections now the fun thing is that we search in, in in other ways we have a an incoming energy which is your overall energy we have an outgoing energy which is your opportunities and then the energy in the middle which is your emotional core, is by default the most important because the other two are charging it. Now, interestingly, the one on, on the incoming side has the sun in it. The one on the outgoing side has the moon in it. Right? I have them on my hands, actually. Right? Because the sun and the moon, by default, do not share space well. I have them here on my hands um, to feel more aligned. And if I am too stressed, I literally just put... The, the, the blue moon on the sun to calm myself. If I'm too emotional, I put the sun on my emotions to give me extra drive to move away from stuff. I'm not asking you to get tattoos on your hands because that's clearly not for everybody. Point is, I do astrology and I absolutely believe in everything that happens in the universe is happening to us and I have them here for self-empowerment. And here it is also reflected in the reading. But what is also reflected is that is the fact that the sun and the moon by default do not share space well. So when they are close together in your birth chart, then they affect each other. And oftentimes they affect each other negatively because then you don't know whether or not to follow your head or your heart, which they already talked about, you being insecure this month. So that is also highlighted across the board. So... That is amazing that this comes up. Uh, uh, that's another reason why I love my, my guides so much, because they're just bloody awesome, right? I always say to people, the weakest link is here, is me, because medium means the guy in the middle. And, um, you know, bottom line is, this is amazing that this comes up, but it also confirms, for want of a better word, that what you really have to look at and for is balance. Don't underestimate the importance of things being equal and even and balanced now whether or not we get there is a different story let's now look at this the overall energy is not 
easy for Scorpios because you have the Sun and retrograde. So we're not really counting the Sun and the Moon when we're looking at retrogradation. We also don't count the North Node and the South Node, um, which uh, because the way they, they move, they're always in retrograde, if that makes sense. And back in the day, you wouldn't count Pluto, Uranus, or Neptune, the outer planets, in the, uh, in the uh, sections of attributing meaning, because they are retrograde about five, five months a year, and therefore we're seen as so-called negative planets and were uncounted. But it would be silly to think that when planets are in retrograde, things are the same. No, retrogradation means things are slowing down and are harder to integrate and harder to understand. And you have the Sun in retrograde. Now, the Sun is what gives you the drive and the zest and the energy for life. And you will find, Scorpios, that in October 2023, you will not be, or maybe let's say another word, another way, it doesn't suit you to be aggressive this month because Scorpio by default you are depicted by a scorpion um, and the earlier you stand up the better it always is because the taller the Scorpio or the scorpion um, the larger the pincer the larger the pincer the less venom the scorpion needs um, and the idea is once you possess venom it can also harm yourself point is when the sun is in retrograde and that denotes going slow or slower that's then what you should be doing. Now remember, you have the sun in retrograde. There's really nothing more life-affirming and more powerful than our sun. And so therefore, you're not losing anything by stepping back a little. And you're not losing anything by doing things much slower. But the point is, you also need to go much slower because you will be affected when you think you can just continue to run when you don't have the energy anymore, right? Yeah, it doesn't quite flow super well, let's put it this way. Um, and yet, I don't get a massive issue here as long as you, as long as you understand to, to just do things slower and remove yourself from the drama of life, if that makes sense, right? I'm getting a weird image here before we move on to the emotional core. And um, I'm getting the, the sentence, and I have no idea what that means because I can't quite figure this out. I can't quite figure out why why that sentence. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm being shown, um, you know, a parking space, and they have these little things where you where you have to put your car through, and it gives you the max headroom. So there's a maximum headroom, which means you can't get through there if your car is larger, <laughs> right? And they're singing, paranoia, paranoia by by the art of noise. I can't sing, but you understand the point. I'm seeing the max headroom thing. And what the guides are saying is, while it is important for you to stand tall, you might find, you might hit your limits because you can't get through when all you are is tall and loud. So I'm getting the imagery. I'm just a bit, you know, uh, why does it have to be with cars if I don't even drive, right? <laughs> anyway, they're giving me max headroom. But there's another important thing that I'm getting with max headroom. So I'm fucking ancient, right? I'm 56. And I do remember a lot of stuff from the 80s when some of you went around. And there was a TV show um, called Max Headroom. And as, I'm not sure, I didn't watch it religiously. I'm not even sure if, if it was actually uh, on a lot in Germany. I only came across it when, when The Art of Noise had a hit with the song Paranoia, which was um, about Max Headroom. Uh, anyway, so I don't uh, remember and recall all that much. The point is, in the song... Uh, Matt Frewer was the actor who um, played Max Headroom. And while he was really not aware oftentimes where he was and who he was, it was sort of a pre-Robocop story, right? So I think he either lost his life and then got plugged into a computer or something. Anyway, one of those older science fiction stories. Let's put it that way. The point is, in the, in the energy and in the song, there is a a charm, a childish charm in that energy that he has. He can be quite funny because of it. Um, and that's what I'm getting, is for you to... Uh, no, no, that sounds a bit weird. 
I'm not asking you to watch Max Headroom and then become Matt Frewer and, and, and talk, duh, 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 right? They're not asking you to be silly about it. <laughs> and he would do this, you know, it was back in the day when, when we had the first sort of samplers and he would say words three times, right? Anyway, I, I digress. The point is, he was charming and sometimes it felt like he's playing stupid, which is not what he, what, he, what he did, but he wouldn't be outright frustrated all the time. And, I, and because they give me that imagery, and I guess, like I said, I only work here, um, I would appreciate if my guides gave me anything of Star Trek, for instance. I've watched, you know, light years, see what I did there, of Star Trek. Give me a fucking episode of Star Trek, I get what you mean. Max Headroom, not so much. I'm getting there in the end, so sorry if this is a bit long here. Ultimately, what the guides are saying is, while you're going slower, have tongue-in-cheek and be a bit funny about stuff, if that makes sense, right? Anyway, guess what I'm gonna uh, YouTube in, 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 when, I, when I'm done with that reading? Paranormia, paranormia, paranormia. Huh? Right? Anyway, so now we're looking at your, at your emotional core for the month of October 2023. Scorpios, are you ready? You have progression and you have the, this is a, um, an astrological deck. You have an Imam Koeli, which is which is not quite the, the mid-heaven of your birth chart, if that makes sense, right? But it shows you balance, right? In your birth chart, there has to be a balance. So the point is, you know, you have your birth chart and it goes somewhere and then when you calculate all the angles, there is literally a line that goes through it, right? So you can see, you could see a, a birth chart like, um, like hemispheres, if that makes sense. And you will normally find six houses obviously you, because you always obviously you always find six houses in one and six houses in the others but the idea is to create some sort of balance um and that's what this um means so and therefore it has to do with being rooted so what the guides are being are saying to you and the energy of root or being rooted has the number eight plus three which is 11 a master number highest number there is is 11 and then the energy of progression has 56. 5 and 6 is 11 too. When it comes to your emotional core, you have two master numbers. Things will work for you because you already have put the work in, you have the highest number there are, and you are already where you're supposed to be. So I don't see you needing to do an awful lot extra here to get somewhere. But you have to remain grounded and you have to under understand just because you want something does not mean that another party another person wants the same thing some people need a bit more time even when they are attracted to you point is you have to understand this is about relationships this is not about healing you have done the healing otherwise there wouldn't be two master numbers but in order for you to really be sounds a bit weird super happy and get super happy <laughs> and stay super happy in relationships it is still a journey and what i'm getting from this is that you have made a lot of you have worked a lot on yourself and therefore they ask me not to go back into old patterns and repeat shit that you did way before even if you see something that triggers you uh, that another person does remember that the universe sent them to trigger you because it, if, if it had been released they couldn't trigger it so don't get angry, just understand that they are also here, no matter who you are intimate with. They are here to teach you, and you are here to teach them. So understand that, please. So the point they're making is here, um, be understanding, and they're not asking you to be forgiving, they're asking you to be understanding so you can redirect uh, people, but from a point of being grounded. Um, and it's not necessarily so much about being the better person here, but understanding the moment you, you get pissed off, your arguments go nowhere. Okay? So, just to cut the long story short, be rooted, be grounded, remain calm, and understand that anything you're after, love life included, is and will always be a journey. Okay? So, now we're looking at your opportunities as they present themselves to you in the month of October 2023. You're watching Thomas's Tower Readings. Please like, subscribe and share. Now, before we uh, continue, let me just tell you that I'm now an executive uh, contributor for a, uh, an online magazine called Brains, Brains Magazine. 
and um, they handpick people that they want to write for them and i write a lot for their uh, lifestyle slash mindfulness section of their magazine you find the link in the description box below i would really appreciate you um looking at the articles that uh that get published and there's so many more than just mine that are fucking awesome so you would love it but it would be awesome if you could actually have a look at the magazine that i write for okay that said, let's continue and look at opportunities as they present themselves to you in the month of October 2023. Now, Scorpios, I said to you earlier, you have the moon. The moon is about your emotional core. So when it comes to anything to do with what sustains you financially, you need to be happy. You need to feel from the heart. This is my place. This is where I belong. My guides. They give me uh, um, another song here. I'm hearing, this is my church. This is where I heal my hurts. I can't get no sleep. Anyway, uh, I think they were called Faceless, Insomnia. Point is, um, <laughs> I love my guides, but they're not right. But uh, neither am I. Point is, they're singing that song to me because um, the I can get no sleep insomnia part basically is their way of saying, you know, um, if you're not really feeling that place is welcoming you or you don't feel you really want to continue being there, it will give you sleepless nights and it's not worth it. Ultimately, you have Mercury as the outgoing energy, which is obviously about messages and communication. And what the guides are saying is right now, it is really, really important to have a conversation with whoever is in the way at work to... Um, to, to make things work. And the reason why I'm saying at work is because what I'm not getting, remember, this is a general reading. It might not resonate with all of you. Well, if you want this personal reading, um, just get in touch. I, I have the information in the description box below as well. The point here is you have the number 19, 1 and 9 is 10, slash number 1. So the moon is number 1, right, which is about yourself. So you make sure that you feel right. But the energy of the messages is the number 20. You slash the zero, it's the number two. So it is about another person. And I'm only getting one person here, not a group of people. One person that sort of is the elephant in the room. Unless you work at a zoo, I'm not talking about an elephant. That was my attempt of being funny. <laughs> in any case, what the guides are saying is, what, what is not the solution for you this month, Scorpios, is to... Remove yourself and start over. And this is interesting because October is that month where starting over makes a lot of sense. I'm just not getting it for you. I'm getting uh, to, to see if things can be altered, if communication can get you to bring about changes that then make you feel, this is my place, this is my church, this is where I heal my hurts. Right? Um, any case... Um, that's all I got. I hope this helped. Uh, please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, remember you can buy me a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. With all that said, thank you so much for watching Scorpios. See you next time. Bye bye.